but I, I, that's what I know about Doc Merlina. Yeah, I'm sorry. Doc Merlina is, is back. Hello? Yeah, I, have, I had technical issues, sorry. Um, okay, ma'am. Okay. Well, um, actually, Mom, Mom, uh, Doc Marlena, while you're gone, uh -huh. I informed everyone that what Mom Chris, I just I'm relaying what Mom Chris told me about you. What that you were hired? That you were hired one of the school district and um to be the consultant, and you have a lot of connections about like superintendents and then you'll be sending names of qualified applicants. Yep. I do, and I'm planning to send all of you guys. So they'll just have to fight over you, but except you, because you already got a Florida job. Bob. <laughs> but I am still willing to help other teachers as well. But good, good. Uh, you, you know, it's yeah. it's um bringing um help or, I yeah. mean, to everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think you know, people always ask me, well, you're not charging us. How can we help back? As I would always say, pay it forward. I want you to help somebody else. You know, that's all that I want to ask is, uh, but maybe I bring me some wood. I don't know. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah, it just help somebody else. If you help, if you help one person and that, that continues and ask the same, you know, pay it forward. And we're going to have a lot of Filipinos helping Filipinos, you know. That is so rewarding, man. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a good thing to have, and and they you really become family to me. You know the the five Filipino, six Filipino teachers here so far, and there's seven more coming from that one school. You know they already hired them, and so there's going to be twenty pretty soon, I think. And so a bunch of them, not just from my list, but also from agencies list, you know, somehow some agency got a hold of them and they've been getting some from agency. The problem with using an agency is that, and this is what happened with them, is that they want you to pay $4,000 as a placement fee. And if you don't have that money right off, that's 200,000 pesos, that is a lot. And so if you don't have that off, then it becomes a $6,000, which means, and you have to pay it within a year, which means they are paying $500 a month. That's that's twenty. That That's 25,000, 25,000 pesos that you have to pay in a month. I mean, you are making about maybe five or six times what you're making in the Philippines, but you have families to take care of. You have rent and you have food and all these things. So what I'm asking, like Maria, for example, because I was actually the ones helping her from step one to the end. I really made sure that the, the superintendent is the sponsor. The school is the sponsor. So it did not cost her anything. You know, I just helped the superintendent and superintendent is a really one of my closest friends. She's a female superintendent. And so I just kind of kind of guided her through the steps. If you can follow directions, you don't need an agency. You don't need a lawyer. My brother-in-law works for the immigration here. And he told me, Marlena, tell them that you cannot, you can, you, if you have a lawyer or if you have an agency, that doesn't make it any faster. We, we look at the, we look at the application in its own merit. It doesn't matter who's helping you, you know, so that you are wasting your money if you're going to pay somebody because your teachers, you know how to follow directions, just follow directions to the T. That means you just follow each one. They have a checklist of what you're going to do. They have, you know, you just follow each one. And that's what my, my, my Dr. Poole, my friend um, superintendent did. And she got Maria here. In fact, Maria was going to be interviewed three or four months later. And she wrote a letter to the immigration saying, I really need this teacher like now. And so they move her interview, you know, closer. So she was able to come here faster because um, because of the letter from the superintendent. And my brother-in-law said that that really carries a lot of weight. If they write something coming from the school in the school letterhead, that carries a lot of weight for them because they realize that there is a shortage of teachers in the U.S. and especially in Arkansas. Because ang mga tao gusto man mo New York, mo Florida, mo atong mga famous places ba? Ang nakakuan lang ana dong, for example, kaya sa Florida, mahal kayo ilang abang. So, which means that ang ilang, ang ilang room, like in, you know, in Arkansas, they are given like an Airbnb, you know, a really big house with four bedrooms and um, yeah, furnish na tanan, ana tanan mga butang, tanan ng mga kuan, mga gamiton sa, sa kuan, sa uh, kusina, tanan, what you see, like, they, all they have to do is bring their clothes. Nya, ila lang gibahin, baka upat man sila, di ila lang gidivide o upat sila. So, even though kuan brat brato na lang ilang nabayran kay upat man sad sila upat man sad ka room pero not every school will take care of you like that sometimes they will just say you on your own so if you have in florida for example most of the apartments may be 800 a thousand dollars a month so your pay 
it may be not as much, you know, dili dili ba makuan ba dili mabalance ba burag mas makdako kag mabayran pero daghan inong kag makita on the other hand gusto kun gusto jud kag entertainment whatever daghan kay kag mga duol ka di Disney World man ana ba pero mahal man sad na <laughs> mo ato sa kag Disney World for example 100 dollars a day sa mangbayad na sa gate nya lain na sa nang uban-uban whatever so so it's also gonna just kanang sa imo rang unsa imong gusto ba sa Arkansas burag probinsya if you like like a province you're fine. My my, akong akong sisters sa Australia, for example, nga anad kayo ka ng mga sudad in siya pag arin niya dito in siya. Lo, uy, nakapuyo ka dito. No, probinsya ka yun nga rin. Anad man siya nga 10 minutes to go siya sa airport. Kaya puting, puting ko ana baborog city dyan. Baborog Cebu dyan, baborog Manila dyan. O niya, kanang maanad raman ka. Eh, ganahan makay ko sa kanang, ganahan kay ko kanang probinsya, bang, probinsya pero naatanan. Naatanan ba? Everything's here. All the modern, you know, amenities and everything. The only thing is if we go to a big city, mo drive me two or three hours. Ana, to ana dito na nasa mga salitrak or sa, you know, sa sa Springfield, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee. You know, um, kang um, um, what's Graceland? Elvis Presley's place. You know, that's very close to where they they are. Um the uh, Maria and them were living. But anyway, so daghan kay kag makita niya rin na go back to, to driving again. You know, kinsa may mudani mo kung wala ka nang, wala di ka drive. You know, kung maadto ka kung sa imong mga makuanan. For example, spring break Manila next week, ako silang kwaon, niya ako sila isuroy-suroy para kuan para na kanang ka nang naamay lingaw sila ba kay mas takla sa sabalay. Niya naamay, niya. you have to take your TOEFL. You know, who knows what TOEFL is? You know, teaching Oh, oh, yeah, your fluency. Yeah. So Maria already passed her. So I'm going to go hotel to die before the night before. So kanang sila kaya masayu kaya sila matog kaya ng kuan kita magmaglingolingaw ta samtang sila magmatog sila kay pero magduwa-duwa mi kaya ng mag we're just have fun but I'm gonna bring a lot of games and things and that ona kung majungan I don't know if they know how to play majung but. <laughs> I'll bring a bunch of little games that we can play. And then ako siyang sorry-sorry after mag sorry sorry me. So anyway, so, so that's, that's the thing though. You you want to make sure that there are some kind of, you know, burag connections ni mo ba na kay nga to'y at least na kay kaila or somebody kay nga no. Lonely kay ka. You will feel so lonely kay sa Pilipinas. Anad mga kaita nga da, na nagitay mga silingan na atay daghan nga ka. Ila, anad tanan nga rin kay kuan uban nga rin mga silingan nila magay kakaila. I mean, in Arkansas, kaila jud mi. Of course, you know, gamay na mga taon. So kaila sa nako. Kay, kay, kay maista ko diri po a long time. Unya, nakaila sa sa nako. Kay na aming mga negosyo diri akong bana. Unya, kanang, kami sa unay tag-iya sa internet. Kani o sa kanang cable nga rin kami tag-iya. Boy, nag-build akong bana. So kaila sa nako tungod ana. Pero kanang, ang mga uban nga Pilipino in town, kay dili, wa sila kaila, lonely kay sila. You know, even though sometimes you might be in a big city, but you feel so lonely. Kay, for one thing, what you kay kwarta and magtigong pagguka kay kasagaran ngari mo arika diri na am kay utang. You have to make sure nga mo bayad pa kang utang. Nya napa kay agency, nagbayad pa kasi imong agency. So you just want to make sure nga i-balance ni mo ba. What what am I will be willing to um to um sacrifice? You know, so kanang uh, mawarning na ko ni mo, Arkansas is not going to be a place nga burag city jud nga anak dako jud nga sidad, pero you can just drive there. I mean, you can be driven there. You know, nga, kung gusto yung siyudad, ato ara, mausa ka oras from you where you are, na ay dako siyudad. You know, whatever. Pero na iubang nga, dili di, di, yung makaantos anak, kay anak jud sila o kanang kuan, anak jud sila nga kanang kinanglang party every night, kanang bar, man, anak, anak, Arkansas is not good fit for you. <laughs> unless you choose Little Rock or some of those big places. So what you can do is Google. If you find a place that you want to apply in Arkansas, Google the population of so-and-so, comma Arkansas, and then it will tell you. So if you have anything about 8,000 and above, like mine is only 2,500 people in my small town of Salem has 2,500 people. We pretty much know most people. Like if you get a wrong number, they'll tell you the right number. <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyway, so yeah, it's a small town. And so Helena is bigger. So I think four times bigger than like Helena, you know, where Dr. Strickland is. Um, it's about four times bigger than Arca, than mine. But, and they're so close to Miss, Mississippi. So you visit another state within 10 minutes, you go to another state. And that's where, you know, so you, you have other places you can visit. But um, in mine, I'm 15 minutes from Missouri. So if you look at Arkansas, the map of the United States, um, Missouri, um, you see Arkansas there, there's Louisiana on the bottom, and then Arkansas, ang akuang, nasa ibabaw sa Arkansas, nga doon na sa Missouri, kaya Missouri may dito sa ibabaw, so na ako diha doon na kay Amuan, so ato ko, say, mag-shopping mo sa Missouri, it's only 30 minutes from me, 
So bisa gamay mga taon, pero makaadto dahil sa Missouri, dako na kayo na. Niya ako mama na aman dire, she lives five minutes from me. So kung mag, mag grocery may adto mis Missouri, kaya ganahan mas mga mga ito na amasay kapaborito nga grocery store dito. So mo adto may, pero may mga adto. But kung, kung puro dool mo na ako, uy kaso, kaya haon na ako na ako, retire na ako. So bisa ganang usa ka eskulahan nga wala ko gihire, I still go and visit uh, visit her. I mean, you know, I just don't do like the you go all day kunila or whatever. I have to like teach, teach in front of them. Kaya wala man ko na, na wala man ko gihay nila as a consultant. But that doesn't mean yung dilika include nako. I mean, you're still gonna be part of our group. You know, is what I'm saying. But kanang pero dilik yung mo charge mga Filipino. Maybe someday if I become a really recruitment, but it's not gonna be very much. So one time paying like maybe two, three hundred dollars, you know, something short, something little rather than five hundred a month by year. That's ridiculous. My my uh, brother-in-law, uh, immigration person, I think there's something illegal that that place might be doing. I want to check it out. <laughs> yeah, because they're really ripping off Filipinos. You know, kay silang trabaho, unya na alay magdawat. Kada usa ka tao, six thousand, laliman ka anak, ya pila ka tao ilaha. So somebody's somebody's becoming rich off of somebody's back, you know. Makita kapoy kaya nagtrabaho niya lai ng makadawat ingon ana, di ba? So anyway, I'm talking a lot, so I need to uh, I need to see when you teach. By the way, there's a ten to strategy. Ten to strategy means that you talk for ten minutes and you have to give the two minutes, give the the students two minutes to process it. So they can either write something or they can either talk to somebody. I want you to think about the, the last 10 minutes that I talked about and then let them process because that means anchoring that information because your brain can only handle so much. So if you anchor it every 10 minutes, they'll remember it. And you can, you can try it at the end of the period when you ask them, when you give them at exit slip, like three, two, one, three things that you remember, two things that you, you, know, you want to use, and then one thing that you still have a question on, then they'll always remember the places where you had stopped and anchored the information. So I have been talking more than 10 minutes, so I want to hear from you now for two minutes. But if you're teaching kindergarten or, or earlier, it's a five-one strategy, five minutes a teacher, one minute the student. That, to me, that's one of the one of the most important strategies to use, because what what did they say? That your mind can only handle as much as your bottom can endure. <laughs> yeah, I am not going to learn. You know, so workshop So anyway, kung kinsa pa may naipangtana, let me see. Ang hirap, ang hirap the stable ang internet. Sinong sabi niyan? Who's saying that? Let me look. Let me make sure. Sorry. Uh, so as as Inet from Cebu, elementary teaching position in Arkansas. Okay, as Inet, um, send me some information. I always need a resume and a cover letter. And you need to go ahead and if you don't have your passport yet, I know it's going to cost you money, but it's worth it. Go ahead and get your passport because passport takes a long time to get, you know, all the papers. So get your passport already because um, you might want to wait on the on the transcript evaluation, because that's like 10,000 pesos, that's a lot, but it, it needs to be done within six months of hiring. So wait on that. Like for example, once you get like somebody interviewing you or whatever, you might wanna start looking at getting your transcript done. If you think that that's a possibility, okay, six months, they have, you have to do it again. You don't wanna waste that money, right? And so passport is to me is the one that you really need to be moving on and working on. So, um, Zoom meeting, okay. I just knew about Zoom meeting, okay. That I've joined, okay, that's nice. Okay, Jamaica, did I talk to you? Physical science major, okay, in, good. I, I'm interested in Arkansas, okay. Sorry, sorry, Ivory, you have a, a stable, a stab, um, not stable internet. Um, my age limit, no, there's no age limit because um, it's illegal to even ask you about your age. A bunch of you, when you send the information, you say, I'm so many, I'm so years old. You're not even supposed to do that. I mean, Filipinos do it. And in fact, whenever in Arkansas or anywhere in the US, when they send an application, they never put a picture because some of them think that if I put a picture, they might discriminate me because of how I look. And so they really don't, I always put mine. I want them to know I'm Filipino. I'm proud to be a Filipino. And so like, for example, I, when I applied to become a you know, full-time um, professor, I, I'm sure I was the only one who put my picture in there. You know, I want my picture in there because I want them to know that I am, you know, that I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm, a, I'm an American, but I am not a, a white American or a black American. You know, I am an Asian American. 
Yeah. And then, um, walang age limit. Oh yeah, walang age limit. Day. They should not be asking you about that. They're not even supposed to ask you about if you're married, have kids. Those are illegal questions, but it doesn't stop other people from doing that. So uh, if you really want them to know, go ahead and include that in your introduction. But I would recommend when your introduction, focus more on the academic part of it. What you believe in teaching, what you, um, you know, what, uh, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses in teaching, you know, how long you've been teaching and have you enjoyed it? You know, what, what did you realize is your favorite age, for example? You know, when I was teaching, I always thought, oh, I love kindergarten to fourth grade. And then later on, when I taught the other subjects, because I've taught all the subjects except 10th and 12th, I really like high school. I really, I, I realized later that I really like high school. I guess as, as, as I had gotten more experience, I like high school because they're like adults. They actually talk to you like adults, like during recess, for example, you know, when they're in their locker in the hallway and I'm sitting right there, they're over there telling me about their love life. And they're telling me about their problems in real life. You know, they're wanting to know my opinion, for example. I kind of like that because for the little kids, they, you know, they're still very young. They can't, you cannot really have that adult conversation with. But there's a time in your life that you may change what you like. But anyway, um, you have any credential from ESL because I already have my application. But EPI, that's fine. A lot of some of the school, I mean, I don't know if that is um. That is a school um, or immigration. Is that an immigration? Uh, do you know that is an immigration requirement for that trans transcript evaluation or is that just a school requirement? What is that? Immigration requirement? Anybody know? Um, we have uh, the required mom from the API. API, okay. So if it's required then you have to do it, right? You have to follow it, which means that you really need to be aggressive about finding one because they do have a six month thing. And that's yeah. why I wanted to go ahead and send like this time is when they are already looking at hiring for next year, because school here starts in um, August, usually third week of August, and it ends around third week of May. Some schools would end up like end of May, depending on off times during the, during the year. But you have to serve um, 180 days is what the required no, 190 days is what the required student teacher interaction days so usually it's 180 but then the 10 is like days professional development so pd days but different schools will do it differently as well but i know the requirement for the state that's what it is and anyway so for elementary elementary and high school students you also have of all the 50 states in the US, nine of them, nine of them still do spanking. They would still, they still do that. So when I taught, I told my principal, I said, I do not feel comfortable. I'm sorry, but I don't feel comfortable spanking kids because um, because you might you might get some parents that kind of, you know, if you put a mark in their kid, they'll take a picture and sue you. And if they win, you could lose your license, and you would you have to register as a sex uh, as a as a sex abuser, sexual abuser thing. So you do not want to do that, especially when I was an administrator, a principal. I told my superintendent that I'm sorry. I know that part of this is like your your the school does um, corporal punishment, which is bunal. And I don't feel comfortable about that. I'd rather send them to an alternative, you know, educational setting. You know, kay kuan man kay na amagun na sila na aslay at tuan kay nga maistra ganing ang tiktak ayo nga at sila magwork. I would rather do that or suspend suspend them, but I'm not gonna spank them because I could just see, I can just see the the headline that he's a Filipino teacher, you know, spanking these black kids or white kids or whatever. I do not want that. It's not worth my license. It's not worth my life. You know, you could go to jail. So I because it's like it's like abuse. You know, you don't want to be abused. But there are still nine states in the U.S. Where Arkansas happens to be one of them. Ngamabuna la mamuna lang gihapon. I think Florida it might not be anymore. I don't remember. You have, I have to Google that. But I know at one time I googled it, and there were nine schools in in the U.S. that still do corporal punishment. So I just want you to be aware of that. You know, you don't want to tell them that during your interview, of course, because they might stop them from hiring you. But later on, be honest to your principal that I know this is, you know, and I think what I also would like to tell you is if you're planning to, uh, to, um, uh, to apply to that school, I want you to check the website out and I want you to read everything that's in the website because that really helps you when you answer. 
especially their um, student policy handbook, their parent, their handbook for everything from, from student to parents to teachers handbook and so on. You might wanna read that because that's what, that's what they follow. And every school has their own. They even have a technology handbook where you know, if they allow technology, when do they do that? And some schools would allow in the classroom because they use it on strategies like Paul Everywhere and Kahoot and all these other things. But some schools are not. And sometimes it depends on their IT person, their technology person that every school has. Some of them are so old fashioned that they don't even allow Facebook, they don't allow um, YouTube and all that. It's TikTok Iba. So I, when I talk to them, I would say, you know what? These kids are using it. You just have the matter of filtering what cannot be in, in but you cannot like just stop them from using it. That's social media. You know, that's something they do on the recess time or their, you know, time. But of course, I'm more of a, you know, modern think, thinker, not an old fashioned thinker, although I'm 54 years old now. But <laughs> so I really believe that kids should be allowed to use technology. But some of your administrators who are already like really older and they're not very, they're not very, uh, very not seasoned on using technology. They're digital immigrants instead of digital native. They really don't feel comfortable about having the kids have their phone at all. Although some kids would can even text inside the jacket. I mean, <laughs> I remembered when I was teaching English to the eleventh grade. I'm like, okay, I want my I want hands on the desk. This is so important because if you are distracted on this, you're gonna fail the test. We are reviewing or we're doing something important. I I really do not want anybody texting under the jacket like as if I don't know. You know, you can check my driver's license. I was not born yesterday. But anyway, <laughs> but um, but some teachers, you just have to have a balance too, you know, because sometimes it, the kids just hate teachers that are so strict. Like, you know, we tend to be very strict because we come from the Philippines and in our culture, there's just no nonsense. You know, just like we are so formal and we want kids to behave. But here they're so informal. A bunch of the schools here are so informal that they kind of, they want to be laid back. You want to be a teacher that understands where the kids are coming from. You know, Maria has a very good balance of that, for example. She would like, you know, she's very friendly with them, but at the same time, she's kind of a little strict whenever she, you know, she has the rules and she would tell them, no, that's not allowed, whatever. But then she relaxes, like during break, whatever, she just like visits with them. And I always tell everyone, knowledge of, knowledge of content is, of knowledge of students is just as important as knowledge of content. So you need to make sure that you have this balance, that you know your subject that you're teaching, but you also know who you're teaching, which means that you need to visit with your kids. You need to go to get to know them, like go attend their ball games, for example. I always attended ball games and I always saw my kids that sometimes they are not really good at school, but they're really, really star basketball players or football player or soccer player. And that's what something that you could use during your conversation. And when they're writing, you know, whether, for example, we're doing um, a thing on talking about your interest and hobbies and and you can use an example uh, of of because of what you know about kids an example of this is um i had a, i had a student named kyle and kyle oh my gosh he was like way taller than me like really this big tall kid right and i was teaching fourth grade at that time and from kindergarten to third grade said, oh my gosh marlena no, okay, Kyle. Oh my gosh. Lo okay ka. Kay si Kyle na si mong class ko. Ano what's wrong with him? Kay di man ko. I always believe that children will will start fresh and it's a clean slate with me. I'm not going to believe what the teacher from last year say because I want to see it for myself. You know, so I don't have a preconception when day one that, oh, this kid is going to be like this. Everybody's going to be in the same slate with me. And so I, but I, of course you hear this because they tell you in the lounge. And so I was just observing him and he tends to be like one people to his he's he used to know that I'm the boss, you know, kind of type thing. Well, I really want to know, so I found out later, crazy about airplanes. He was always folding airplanes. He was always riding, drawing airplanes. And so I said, huh, I got him because my husband, piloto man, we had, an airplane, we had two airplanes at that time. And so I said, hey, ako ni magamit. So akong giinan ang, ako din giinan akong boss nga principal ko nga pwede nga akong i-change ang naaman may units. And the unit, last unit in the year it's flying but flight and i want to change it to the beginning of the year if it's okay with you okay do haraman akong kauban nga maista kung kay ako nag meeting ko nila okay ra manila so ako den gi ask ang principal nga okay kung ano man ingo kay tungod kay Kyle really likes this and i really want to win him over and i really want him to have a good school year and so the principal knew about him so he said oh yeah go ahead go for it because you know your people already know so ako den gi change to ako den gi invitar akong bana gi ko ano ni gi nang pada nag dash og detato nag video sa gusto detato airplane so ti ani flight checks on say buhaton before sa chikwan nya nag fly 
behind me and if I feel that one and just excited me I can I can I can I ride it can I can I come over and ride it you have to earn it you know it will take you maybe a month or two months to earn it but you're gonna have to get so many points to get there to have a you know just to watch a, a flight check in person you know so we were like building it up of course I work with a pair and the, the mother was a nurse and she was a single mom and I was just telling her this is what I'm going to do with Kyle because I really want him to have a good year and it sounds like he's going to be Mr. McCullough's best friend you know <laughs> the, the biggest fan and you know long story short this kid had earned a flight with Mr. McCullough you know I went, went with him I another thing that he wanted to do was go to a Chinese restaurant he's never been I took him with his mother and uh with my family and then I um Anyway, this kid still continues. He's a professional now. He continues to, to talk to me. He said, you know, that Miss McCullough, you really changed my life because I had a very good year that year. And that that really made me realize how important education is. And I really want to be like you and all this stuff, you know, kind of, it's kind of a success story to me because uh, this is a change in this kid's life that was like, instead of like he having this bully thing, he was like friendly to people. And I, I built this, this classroom community that's a prof, you know kind of learning community that here in our classroom we are like family you know we help each other we support each other we don't bully each other you know but i also model that i'm kind to you you know i respect you and i do not do not um i do not demand respect but i earn that respect from you and i think that's important like they're our, my own kids you know, they're only, they're my biological kids. I only have two, Jet and Stephanie, but they're like Jet Stephanie in, in my life. And at the time, I w when I was um, teaching elementary, we had a, we had a pool. We had a, well, we did, we, we do okay, I guess, because we had a pool that's an inside, you know, inside the building pool. And so that's one thing I was using too. Every Friday, whoever earned that can have their family come over and we would have barbecue and so on and they get to swim in my pool. <laughs> So that's like a popular giveaway. You can do that. You know, that's a very unique thing that was mine. But then another thing is um, we had the, because we owned a cable company and we had in our basement, we had the control where I could just put a video and it shows to everybody in town. So we were always filming in my classroom. And on Friday nights, they would have a film, you know, shown to the whole community about, you know, the stories we did, they were acting out, they did commercial, they were doing commercial, you know, things that were real life. You know, we were studying about weather. They were meteorologists and, and they were talking about, they have their own, you know, map and they were talking about the, the, um, the weather and all that. And so I would think about things that they will do in life and I will do it in my classroom, but I connect it to what we're doing. So it's very active. We were cooking when we were doing uh, writing about steps to steps to writing on, on analysis steps, then they have to bring something that they are good at and then they would show us step by step and then we have to write about it. One person wrote, I really love popping popcorn. And I said, okay, I'll bring some popcorn popper and I want you to write first what you're gonna do. So everybody wrote what they're gonna do on popcorn popping and they forgot to put that you have to plug in the popcorn popper first. <laughs> So they were like following the direction. I'm like, oh, we forgot that. We were supposed to plug it in first, you know? So it's kind of neat because it's, they're excited about it because it's not just a boring lecture, but it's really things that you can use in life. And when you teach, you should do something like that. Try to always check with your, always check with your principal though. If, you, if you're not sure, like my sister's so funny. She was a science teacher. I know she was a sixth grade teacher, but she taught all the subjects. And so she's one of those that my sister, Myla, she's our youngest, so she's a teacher still. And she came to our school. She was in another 45 minutes away, which is back now. But she came, she got divorced, and she, I wanted her to come to Salem and uh, because her ex-husband was really not nice, and I don't want her to you know, be still in the same town. So we helped her buy a house, and so, so she bought a house here. And the first thing that she wanted to do, she wanted to, she wanted to do a... Um, chicken mummy thing, because they were talking about Egyptian, you know, the, the, the Egypt, the Egyptians were actually mummifying chickens, mummifying cats, mummifying animals, and of course mummifying people, right? So she wanted to do that. She, uh, she had four groups, only 16 kids. So she had a four groups of four. And so she bought a live chicken <laughs> and she had them to mummify them and put all these gauze and all this thing and they buried it in the yard. Can you think about what's wrong with that <laughs> the next day? The principal came, the principal came and said, Miss Mylet, I want to talk to you. <laughs> he said, 
what did they do? You know, she was like, she was like um, wondering what she did. She said, well, Miss Milet, can you explain why we have all these gosses in the yard, you know, in the playground where the kids were playing, they were like over there because the animals at night were digging we're digging this uh, chickens and they have this chicken. Of course they ate the chicken, but then they left all this you know, mess in the yard. And Myla said, oh my goodness, I am so sorry. I'm going to make sure that we clean it up or whatever. And she did, but she said, I apologize. I'm so new here, but I will make sure I'll ask you permission if I do something, something major like that. You know, I said, there's so many things that could have gone wrong with that. And for one thing, you have salmonella. You could have gotten things, people sick, you know, all this, but she was just so one of these really excited people. Like you think, if you think I'm hyper, she's like 10 times hyper. <laughs> yeah. So, but she's an awesome teacher, but Anyway, so what else do you what else do you have? Let me check some more of the thing. Um, Kababayan, Bisaya, yep, Bisaya Taday, um, or don't. Um, part of the orientation, I learned a lot. Okay, have a credential evaluation. Okay. Um, what's F, tell me about FCE? Somebody, tell me about what FCE is. Um, uh, FCE is a foreign credential evaluation. Uh, okay. We're in your, yeah. Okay. But you use different companies like Spantram and all that stuff, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma but that's the 10,000 pesos one. So I, I feel bad that you have to pay that. But, you know, that's why I said on my, some of my emails, I said, save all your receipts because some schools are very, very generous and they would actually say, oh, I want to reimburse you, but they will never reimburse you without a lot, without a receipt. So uh, sometimes, especially if it's a really good friend of mine, superintendent, I would say, hey, you know how poor we are in the Philippines. We might, it might help so-and-so if, um, if you do this. And they usually listen to me. So that's, that's a nice thing. You know, they would, uh, if they are so embarrassed to ask the administrator, they would tell me. And I would tell them, you know, without saying, oh, you know, so-and-so said this to me. I would say, have you thought about doing this? You know, I would just add them. But really, I was told by the Filipino friends that, that they needed that. And I would, and that they would not have been aware if they, it was not told to them. On the other hand, the administrators sometimes cannot, do not know yet do not know the teach the Filipino teachers yet. So they don't know how to like really talk to them or whatever. So they would get through me. They would ask me and said, Marlena, can you find out whatever? You know, I said, yeah, okay, I will. And so anyway, so that's, the, there's a, there's an advantage there. And of course I'm in Arkansas and I'm trying to expand to other states because I have friends from all over because in my, in Arkansas State University, we offer master's classes, specialist and doctorate. And since I've been teaching the master's level and a specialist level, and in every semester, I usually have 500 students and every 25 students, I have a graduate assistant who are actually teachers. They're actually licensed teachers that are, <laughs> a bunch of them are friends of mine and they get paid per student to help grade papers. So I have all this list of students from all over the United States that are teachers in their particular field. So I have, I have actually kept up a, a, a database of all my former students and I've been there more than 10 years. So, you know, while I was teaching, I was also teaching at the university. And it's kind of nice to have to find, I could sort them and see who are in that state. And I'm planning to, to actually contact them and say, hey, if you need some teachers from the Philippines, I will, you know, I have this list. So, but I will start from Arkansas just because I'm from here. But if you have other states that you want to go because you have relatives there or whatever, you let me know. And I'll try to find out if I know someone there. Usually it helps when you're not just a stranger emailing the administrator. It's like somebody knows you. So you go through that like that way. And so that way they could actually talk to the principal or superintendent and say, I have a friend or I had a professor, you know, Dr. McCullough that, that's helping other Filipinos and, and this is the list that she gave us. Can you consider this or whatever? Because the list that I'm giving her um, or them would be have a list with all your information, like number, your name, and, and next to your name, I put math, high school, whatever, you know, that way they'll see immediately. And then the next column is number of years, and then what your degrees are, and then, um, and then I put uh, what I have of you, uh, cover letter, resume, passport, some of them already sent me those. And then I put link to your resume. You, every one of you has a folder in my Google Drive. And then the link to that folder, they will link on that, they will click on that and they will see everything you've sent me. So that's why if you send me things that your, your potential um, administrator would, would be able to see that because that's why that's your file. So you have, some of you had files with 10, 12 things in it. Some of you, only, most of you have two things because I have the cover letter and the resume. 
So if you feel like, I think a, a copy of the passport, just the way the picture would help because they know you're pretty much ready to go. Because some of them are faster, like they want to be fast. They The school can actually pay $2,500 for a premium processing, which means that if you pay that, if a, teach, if a school pays that, then it will, in, within two weeks, you have to know. My brother-in-law said, yeah, I know. When we, when we get those premium processing things, we have to do it within 10 days. We have to, we have to, uh, to return it and, and do our decision. And so but there's no conflict of interest with me because my brother-in-law is only doing the Mexican immigration, not the Philippines. So your stuff will never go through him. So he could advise me all he can, but it will never, he will never have a conflict of interest because he's doing the Mexican, the Mexican applications. They're assigned different countries. So he's married to my sister and they live in Dallas. So, okay, what else? Um, thank you, you're welcome.